Okay, so today we're going to talk about early movie musicals. And when I say early, I mean in the 1930s. Um, once talkies began, musicals became pre popular pretty quickly. Um, music existed in films prior to talkies, but um, in, in some cases it was even synced up with, uh, with actors' uh, lips, but that was pretty difficult. Uh, so once talkie uh, technology became more sophisticated, musicals rose in prowess because people have always loved musicals. Um, you know, vaudeville was a musical tradition, and so that translated really easily to... Um, Films. So, as I mentioned during our Duck Soup lecture, musicals were really popular during the Great Depression because of the spectacle, um, and as I mentioned just now, because they were heavily influenced by vaudeville. So, um, because they were influenced by vaudeville, musicals um, tended to, well, they started to become formulaic because they often, uh, vaudeville was not like a play or a musical that had an overarching plot, it was more like these smaller, short acts. Um, that you would go and see. So you'd go to a theater and you'd see several different dancers, maybe com magicians, comedians, stuff like that. So by the late 1930s, um, a lot of audiences were oversaturated with m movie musicals because they were so popular um, and they had become very formulaic and um, had kind of lost some of that creative or innovative element. So we're going to see then in the 1940s, 50s, um, the reinvention of the movie musical with uh, MGM and their sort of golden age of movie musicals, but we're going to talk about that at a later time. So early movie musicals, um, because of that vaudeville tradition, uh, most of the songs were divorced from the plot. So in musicals nowadays, uh, usually the songs serve to either advance the plot or give us greater knowledge of characters um, or something like that. In a lot of early movie, movie musicals, um, the songs weren't really related to the plot or characters in uh, any really specific way. They were loosely related. Um, part of this is because with musicals, often um, the main song or songs uh, would end up becoming like billboard topping hits. Um, and this was especially true with MGM uh, movie musicals. So um, they weren't so much worried about the songs advancing the plot as they were about them being good and selling records <laughs> and selling singles. Um, there was a lot of ballroom and tap dancing um, as well as other uh, forms of dance that were common in vaudeville acts. Um, what was called burlesque dancing back then and that's not necessarily burlesque as we understand it now. Um, it's It just means like cheap theater rather than like ladies doing being half naked. Um, so uh, in a lot of early movie musicals, I will also say that blackface was really common. And there is an instance of blackface in this movie, Swing Time. I am going to make us watch it. It's going to be really uncomfortable. It's good that it's uncomfortable because that means that we have progressed culturally and as a society um, so that things that are racist are uncomfortable. That's good. <laughs> um, but blackface was something that also carried over from vaudeville acts and minstrel shows. Um, and it was exactly what it sounds like. It was um, a racist uh, depiction for the amusement of white people. Um, and they would uh, overemphasize um, and do caricatures of uh, black people as dumb or animalistic. Um, I will say before we, well, before we watch the film, um, there is an instance of blackface in this film, as I mentioned. I will say that while there is no such thing as respectful blackface, because blackface in and of itself is racist, um, in this instance, in the film, and you guys will see what I mean when we get to that scene, uh, Fred Astaire was trying to pay homage to a black dancer uh, Bojangles, who was one of his contemporaries, who was a friend of his. And um, he, so he did a number about him and dressed as him because Bojangles himself would not get a lead in a film. Now, uh, obviously, the, the obvious solution to that would have been for Fred Astaire, or the solution to us now in a modern context would have been for Fred Astaire to advocate for this person to be in a film. Um, but it was a different time. Now, I am not remotely saying that this is appropriate, <laughs> that this use of blackface is okay, but I am saying that Fred Astaire is trying to pay homage to a dancer, 
and he's not necessarily trying to be a racist caricature, although it still happens because blackface. Uh, so something that we are going to see a lot in this film and that we are going to learn about is um, a tracking shot. So a tracking shot is just a shot that follows a subject. So that can be because you're moving the camera, um, you know, side to side. It can be because the camera, typically cameras are put on a track in order to, sh to shoot a tracking shot or they're put on some sort of dolly to move them back and forth, side to side, et cetera, um, because camera work can become very shaky um, when you are, you know, moving it by hand to follow, to follow people. Um, but in this film, they are going to use tracking shots in the dance scenes to create this greater sense of movement rather than just setting up a camera and having people dance in front of it. All right, so let's get into swing time. It's not all racism, just that one little bit. <laughs> the rest of it's quite charming, actually. <laughs> uh, this film was directed by George Stevens and released in 1936. It was, uh, produced by RKO, um, and it stars the dynamic duo Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Uh, these two made lots of movies together. Um, they were both vaudeville dancers who moved to, who transitioned to Hollywood, and um, they made a lot of, excuse me, <laughs> musical pictures together. Um, so, just like vaudeville, the song and dance numbers for the most part, don't necessarily advance the plot and characterization, um, but there are a couple exceptions that are actually pretty modern in terms of their self-reflection, uh, which are neat. Um, and as I mentioned, this film uses tracking shots in order to create a sense of movement. And I want you to really pay attention to that while we're watching. All right, so with no further ado, let's get into our first movie musical, Swing Time. <laughs> 